one. Plant zone maps, that's what we're going to talk about next. Um, what's a plant zone map? Well, there are two basic types of plant zone maps. You have your cold hardiness map and a heat zone map. And we will discuss the cold hardiness map first. Here is the latest cold hardiness map of the United States. And this is a 2012 edition. Uh, it was changed drastically in 2012 to represent uh, warming temperatures. And what this map represents, it represents the average winter minimum temperature. In other words, how cold does it get in a particular zone? And lots of things influence uh, that temperature. Of course, there's, there's latitude, how far south or how far north you are. But uh, elevation comes into play quite a bit, too. So you have to think about that. And also, uh, your proximity to the coast, things tend to be a little bit warmer along a coastline. Um, of course, California is itself its own little world over here. It's got uh, probably five or six zones in the state. Uh, lots of things going on there. But what we're going to talk about mainly is the southeast, particularly Georgia. Um, we, of course, are in the uh, northern part of Georgia. You can see right here the most of Georgia is yellow. So what does that mean? Well, you come over here to the chart. Yellow is zone 8. Uh, the average minimum winter temperature for zone 8 is 10 to 20 degrees. Uh, the northern part of the state, uh, you can see, is zone 7, green. Average minimum temperature is 0 to 10. Here's a close-up right here. You can see zone 8. Uh, there is a little bit of zone 6 in the very tip top of Georgia, but it's not shown here. Now, down along the coast, uh, zone 9, zone 9, the coast in, in over here in Valdosta, um, this is a warmer, almost Florida-like temperature. And you can see some pockets of zone 9 through here that might have something to do with elevation also. But most of Georgia is now zone A, the solid zone A, especially uh, you get around Atlanta, you have what's called a microclimate, uh, an urban microclimate, lots of asphalt, lots of concrete, heating up, staying hot, things are a little bit hotter there. Um, and then up here in uh, the mountains, of course, is zone 7. Now compare that with the old map pre-2012 map, uh, a lot more of Georgia was zone seven. You can see this line right here that separated zone seven from zone eight, uh, in particular zone, what they called zone seven B from zone seven, eight A. Um, this line uh, happens to be along what's called the fall line. Columbus is here. Macon is right here in Bibb County. Augusta is over here on the Savannah River. Um, and this was a marked difference in elevation, quite a bit so. And they called it a fall line because the rivers that cross this line, uh, up here in Augusta, it was the Savannah River, the Ocon I'm sorry, Okmulgee River in Macon, uh, the Oconee River in Dublin, which is right around here, and then the Chattahoochee River over here in Columbus. Well, there were substantial falls, waterfalls at that point. And uh, the early settlers, the early towns, they would use the uh, that water power to power their mills, and these became uh, uh, textile mill centers because of the water power. Now, hence the name Fall Line. Um, but anyway, that marked the line between 8A and 7B, and because there was a change in elevation, there was a change in temperature. But what's happened over the last few years, as you well know, is the temperatures have risen in this area, so we're now, uh, most of Georgia is a solid zone 8. Where heretofore it was half zone 7, half zone 8. A little bit of a interesting stuff there. Now, what does that mean as far as plants go? What does that mean exactly? Well, plants are classified, uh, one, one of the classifications for plants is the zone that they can live in. In other words, how cold can a plant take it before it, it dies, before it ceases to survive, or how? Uh, it's, it's pretty important. Um, one plant in particular, crepe myrtles, Crepe myrtles are a staple here in the south. You see them everywhere. Beautiful trees. Can't beat it for a flowering tree. I don't think there's anything else quite like it. Uh, 
Uh, well, crape myrtles, they are known as a zone 6 to 9 plant. They, uh, they can't survive uh, any further north than zone 6. Now, where's zone 6? Let's go back to this map right here. Um, zone 6, it's the dark green color. And here's zone 6 through here. It goes through, uh, that's West Virginia, uh, Kentucky, Missouri, Southern Illinois, um, Indiana, Southern Indiana, Missouri, Oklahoma. So, you know, it, they could survive here. Uh, I don't, I don't hear about a lot of crape myrtles in that area. So I'm thinking it's more of a Zone Seven, Zone Eight, Zone Nine tree, and that just shows you where the crape myrtle is expected to survive. Of course, over here in California, it'll go there also. Um, now, again, the further north you go, uh, colder it is, duh, and the further north you go, the zone numbers decrease. So if you're looking at uh, zone one would be the coldest, and it would be up here in, in you know, uh, two eggs, Canada or Alaska. Uh, this is Minnesota right here. Northern Minnesota is a solid zone three. Southern Minnesota is a solid zone four. Wisconsin has bits of zone three in it. You get up here to Maine. You got some zone three. Pretty cold stuff up there. Uh, New York right here is a good zone five. So when you're shopping for plants, you need to find plants that are going to survive uh, the zone that you happen to be in. Uh, it's not that big of a problem for us in the south. Uh, we've got a, a, a large palette of plants that can survive here. Um, now, there is a reverse. Uh, in other words, there are plants that can survive the cold, but they don't do so well in the heat. Our heat and humidity is murder on a lot of plants. Uh, a popular northern plant is lilacs. Uh, lilacs don't tend to do as well here. They, uh, yeah, they need a set number of chill hours to bloom. There are a few varieties that will do well here, but lilacs are a good example um, of a plant that will not take the heat. Uh, peonies are another one. They're a favorite up north. Now, speaking of heat, the, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember who developed it. Here we go. Oh, the American Horticultural Society. They developed uh, about 10 years or so ago, they developed this map. And this is the plant heat zone map. Uh, it might even be older than that, 1997. So about almost 20 years ago, the plant heat zone map. And what it does, it takes into account the average number of days per year above 86 degrees. Uh, it's a measure of how hot it is in a certain place. And as you can see, as you can expect, you know, the further south you go, the hotter it's going to be. Um, Let's see, zone one. Is there any zone one on here? I don't really see any. Zone. Oh, you know what? Here's some zone one. Zone one is there's less than one day above 86 degrees uh, up here in the Colorado Rockies. See that? If you go up here into Wyoming, uh, the Wind River Range, you see some places like that. Uh, there may be some places like that right here on the Sierra Nevadas. Nothing like that around here, unfortunately. Oops, sorry about that. Um, Let's see, the yellow, let's look at zone 8. See that band of zone 8 right there? There are uh, 90 to 120 days of the year that it's above 86 degrees. And that band, that's like the Piedmont of Georgia right below. Atlanta's about right there, so it's, it's down through there. Now the green, zone 7, there are 60 to 90 days of 86 plus degrees and then there's a little bit darker area uh, zone 8 up there in the mountains and there are 45 to 60 uh, hot days over 86 and then a little bit further than that uh, 30 to 45 days up in zone 5 and that's up there just oh, right around Rabin County or so they got uh, some higher mountains in Georgia um, and then in South Georgia hotter than heck down there it's um, 120 to 150 days over uh, 86 degrees. That's zone 9. 
So that's a good indice of, of, the, of how hot it is. And again, there are a lot of plants, um, they can survive the cold, but they just can't survive the heat. So you got to be a little bit careful there. Um, and then speaking of the reverse, there are a lot of plants, if you go down to Florida, uh, you'll see, a, especially South Florida, whole different palette of plants down there. They have tropical plants, beautiful plants, and... Um, those plants will survive the summer up here, of course, but they they won't survive the winter, but they do make nice plants. Again, that's the plant heat zone map, American Horticultural Society. Um, here's a blow up of that uh, zone map from that. You can kind of tell some things. Um, anyway, that's all I have on the heat and cold hardiness maps. Again, it's important to know the zones that your plant can survive. Uh, it, it's, uh, you don't want to be planting plants. Uh, if you're working up in New York, you don't want to be planting crepe myrtles. Uh, oh, one more thing. One more thing about that. Um, there, had, there have been years of, of research and study about the cold hardiness of plants, and they, they go into... Uh, the selection of those zones. Uh, there have not been the same amount of uh, data available for the heat zone map. In other words, it's hard to find information on the heat zone of selected varieties that you might be looking at. So, uh, but more and more of that is coming online. Uh, it's something, again, that all the data is not there, so it's kind of hard to find that. Uh, thanks.